Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at the idle selection program and implementation. So uh, for the people that are new here, what I'm doing is basically I'm creating a multi-material upgrade for basically any 3D printer that runs Marlin and that has a compatible motherboard. Um, and uh, I'm trying to do that while keeping the cost as low as possible. So uh, basically in the past uh, months I was working on the idler homing and idler positioning. So how do I get the idler position? And uh, I just managed to do that in the past weeks and that's what you saw in my last two videos. So uh, now I'm gonna go quick updates on like um, my, my videos and how they're going to evolve in the future. So if you're not interested into that, just skip, to, skip ahead a few minutes. I may put a timestamp up there normally. Um, so you can skip to that if you don't want to listen to me talking about my videos. Um, so first off uh, in my comments on last video I was saying that I was looking into using Nvidia Broadcast and this is basically what I'm going to be using from now on because it gives me the ability to uh, have background removal which is extremely interesting when I'm doing code uh, because it gives me the ability to not like show my entire background which is uninteresting and have maximum screen real estate to explain stuff and uh, even if it has artifacts when I move a lot when I'm explaining code I shouldn't move that much. Uh, it also has a small, like, interesting feature, which is auto frame, which I'm using right now, and it basically keeps my head in frame at all times. Uh, then I'm also going to be using, uh, well, a Trello board uh, in order to keep track of basically what I'm doing and new concept and ideas that you give me or that I come up with and that I may want to implement in the future. Uh, as an example, one of you commented on my last videos that we could use actually the slider mechanism. Uh, but that would be the, that, that the slider would actually push the bearing down. Um, basically, it's kind of the opposite of what I'm doing right now. I thought it was an interesting idea, so I'm gonna keep it there, and when I'm done, I may look into doing it. And then just to keep track of all those ideas. Uh, so this board is not completely done. I have a few things to add and update, like the, the self-rewriting spool holders and all that stuff, but this is basically a, a draft of it. So what I just finished doing was I finished doing the Atlas selection and what I'm going to be doing uh, well in the future is uh, test the filament load and unload and the config parameters to input like the, the Bowden tube length and basically all the the case like like your 3d printer uh, specifications um, and the parameters that we're interested in too uh, and yeah I finished uh, doing both of those so uh, yeah that's basically it now I'm gonna roll the intro and we'll get right into it So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to quickly explain the code, how it works, uh, which problems I encountered and how did I solve them. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, so in the last videos, I was working on the uh, homing sequence. I just did a few a small modification, which is uh, I added a method that I call from planner, which is planner position reset extruder. Uh, it's a method that I created and I'm going to explain it a bit later so that it makes more sense. Uh, for the people that didn't see my last video, very quickly, the homing sequence basically is called every time you do a tool change and if um, if like the, the position is not known of the idler, it will it will home it. Um, so basically it won't rehome every time you need to change filament, it will do it once at the first filament change. Um, and uh, for the, the actual filament selection, we have a switch um, case and basically the index is the, the, the command number. So uh, in G code, the, the tool change command is uh, T0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Basically T followed by the number of the tool you want to use. And in filament, to change filament, it's also that same command. Um, so T0 would be filament 1, T1 would be filament 2, etc. So um, first, uh, we'll look at simply the case 1 or, or case 0. Um, because they are all very similar. So um, the we first have a few debugging things. Don't look at them; they're not really uh, important in our case, and they only serve um, a debugging purpose. So uh, the the first thing we do is that we have an absolute position variable, which is basically the amount of rotation you need to go from the position zero, which is the home homed position, to the uh, correct position. So to, to the, the, the original position, so position zero, to the position where the uh, bearing is putting pressure on the correct filament. 
Uh, and that absolute position is um, defined differently based on which filament you're selecting. So if you're selecting the, the first filament, it is going to use the offset and stop to one. Um, and that's basically the amount of steps from the home position to the first filament. Because how the other design, you have an equal amount of space um, or an equal angle between the bearings uh, on the other. Um, but the offset between the end stop and the first bearing is different than that space uh, between the each bearing. So basically what I do is I use that offset for the first one and then I switch it with the constant uh, space between bearings variable and this way I can quickly update those two variables to get like accurate positioning. Um, okay and uh, that's basically it for the absolute position. Then I use planner buffer align minus uh, the absolute position minus either position so basically the move needs to be a negative move uh, because when you move towards the end stop it's a positive move and uh, yeah it's, it's the opposite um, when you're going to select the filament and uh, I use absolute position minus the edit position the edit position is a variable that stores uh, the edit position and after it's homed it's equal to zero but every time we're going to change we're going to update it so that it's accurate so um, then I use uh, two commands, planner synchronize, which is a, a, a method in planner that is like I didn't create, it already exists. And it basically waits for the move to finish, like to, to summarize it very quickly. Uh, and then I use planner position another time, reset extruder, which um, I said I was going to talk about and I'm going to talk about it now. So initially I tried to use that, uh, I didn't use a reset extruder method. And uh, the thing is, it, it keeps track of where your extruder is. is. Even if you think that every move your extruder does is a relative move, so you don't need to know its position, Marlin still keeps track of it. Uh, so I had a small problem. When I was calling planner buffer line current position E plus 1000, uh, what it was doing is that it was getting the current, um, well, extruder position, uh, which is the other position, uh, and it was adding 1000 to it, it was making that very long move, but basically it would stop that move right in the middle of it uh, when it would hit the end stop. But the problem is it would still update uh, the position to have an extra 1000. And uh, we also have another problem with that, is that the, 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 the extruder position is the same for every extruder. So right now I have three theoretical extruders. Uh, I'm using two of them, which is uh, the one that actually extrudes and the one that controls the idler and they both have the same position which doesn't really make sense uh, but that's why I have to do a lot of work on my side to ad adapt this to Marlin. Uh, and the problem is it was adding 1000 but it was not doing the 1000 moves. So when we were calling any of those tool change it was doing a very very long move to go back to the let's say zero position because we have made a 1000 move from there. Um, and that was causing a lot of problems. So uh, normally how you would reset after doing that homing thing uh, is you would use the uh, reset function of planner position, which is right here. Um, this, but the problem is it also reset X, Y, Z, and E. And if imagine I'm doing a tool change, I'm not necessarily going to be doing it at position zero. I'm going to be in it at like a specific height because like you're going to change the tool in the middle of your, your print and uh, X, Y, and Z are not going to be zero. So if I use the reset method, it will reset all the axes and I won't have accurate position and the printer will start and just print everything in the wrong place. So what I use instead is I create another method um, inside tabs.h which is uh, E equal to zero. And um, that function, basically, uh, that function reset extruder, which calls E equal to zero, does exactly the same thing, just only with the extruder. And that helps me uh, reset everything to normal after um, every single move. And um, what I basically do is that I bypass the uh, positioning system of the extruder of Marlin, which actually doesn't make much sense when you're using two extruders. Um, by simply resetting the extruder position every time I do a move um, inside our tool change. Now you may think, well, this will have an impact on performance, but actually when you look at like an entire print, uh, those reset extruding, uh, reset extruder, uh, this reset extruder method is going to be called very, very rarely because you're not going to, to tool ch change tool often uh, when you look at like an entire print compared to like other methods. And um, it, it won't represent, it won't have any impact. 
Um, and it also helps me switch extruders very easily without having to worry about I have to reset in like some weird way the old position and I have to keep track of the old position. Basically what I do is I reset the position every time I want to do a move that is like mine in specific. And then I let Marlin do whatever he wants to do with the extruded position after that when it does regular pin moves. Uh, and that's also why I call it inside the, the, this. And um, yeah, uh, then I simply update the other position to the, the, the theoretical uh, absolute position. So um, actually I could simplify that. Let, let me simplify that. This way, the code is simpler and makes more sense because right now I was repacing, like re redoing the calculations. I don't need to do them, I've already done it. So I reset the alert position to the absolute position uh, that it was supposed to go to. And anyways, we don't have any way to track if we actually went there, but that's exactly the way Merlin works. It calls a move, it doesn't know if the moves have been completed or not, and it simply does it. And that's also why uh, sometimes in your print, if you skip steps, uh, your entire print will shift without even like realizing it and that's because you have no way of knowing if your motor move was applied correctly so this is seriously not an issue and not nothing to worry about uh, so now in terms of code uh, it's pretty much done and um, yeah you have a, a good sense of what I had to do uh, so the, the I had a few issues uh, while doing that the, so the first one was not calling reset extruder um, uh, actually, no, this was not the first one. So initially when I was starting to code this, I was doing this on my test setup. So I'm going to show you a video of what it looks like uh, before. And it was actually using um, uh, my, my previous SKR Pro board, which I know is defective. It has a direction pin problem. And at the time that I tested it, it had it on the extruder 2 port and on the Y axis port. Uh, not port, but like driver. Um, and because it had that direction problem, it was not able to switch direction. And when I was doing my testing, it was always going the same direction. Whatever port I used, I, I tried to remap um, the pins inside BTC, like uh, inside the, the board files, uh, to have our extruder being theoretically the, the X driver, which I knew was working and which was previously working. And uh, it didn't work anymore. So I was like, I have two options. Either my code is wrong, which is totally possible, uh, or my board actually got more damaged and um, it was more damaged so I, I really didn't want to use the new board because it meant that I needed to bring my entire 3d printer close uh, to my computer um, like because I didn't want to to walk uh, um, every single time to the printer with the SD card every time I needed to test something so I, I needed to have it close to me and uh, it just made it a lot harder. But in the end, I had to do it because I needed to test whether it was um, a problem with the old main board or a problem with my code. And in the end, it was actually a problem with my old main board, uh, which got even worse. So like the direction doesn't work on basically any any uh, uh, any like motor port. And uh, I had to bring my entire Ainet E10 uh, next to me with the SKR Pro connected and all that stuff. Uh, to test it so this has a few positives and a few negatives so negatives well i have a three printer sitting uh, on the floor right next to me uh with a lot of wires everywhere which is not great uh but on the other hand i'm able to test uh whether what i'm coding is breaking all the parts of marlin so i'm able to test whether like my homing sequence of the either uh, has an impact uh, during print if i call it during a print and um yeah it's going it, it was something i was going to have to do at some point and um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, then uh, once that was fixed, I had the problem with the reset extruder function. And um, once it was called, when I was trying to adjust uh, every single uh, one of those variables, so to, to get the, the other position to be accurate, so to, to get the right bearing on top of the right thing, uh, on top of the right filament that you want to select, um, I ran into another issue. So like half my move was correct, but like the rest of it was shifting and I, I felt like the position was shifting every time and the more moves I do the, the further away it was and uh, that was actually caused by the fact that my idler was not properly secured to the motor shaft and this meant that the idler was couldn't move freely um, or could like rotate on the shaft without the, the shaft moving so it was 
physical problem, uh, which uh, meant that I was not able to properly dial those. I, I know that they are pretty close, uh, but uh, what I'm going to have to do right now, uh, which I'm going to add in our little um, doing task, is I'm going to have um, to fix the idler so um, mounting system and to fix the idler overall. Because the um, the the idler is not properly secure on the shaft and is also uh, um, kind of broken because I put too much tension on all of the screws. Uh, so it, I'm, you're gonna get a, a small video about that. Um, that's what I have to fix right now. Uh, but my code is working and uh, yeah, that, that's great. So, hey, so uh, well, editing me here. Um, so where are we globally in this project? Uh, I personally feel like I have most of the work, like difficult obstacles. Um, I've overcome most of them, I feel like. So I have all the control I need from both the idler, the different extruders. Uh, I'm able to home the idler. So on the software side of things, I feel like every single roadblock has been passed and like it should go smoothly from here. Now on the physical side of things, well, I just need to, to let's say, polish my code. Then uh, I will be able to start testing my design. And of course, it will not work at first. Like, like the, the chances that it works directly are zero. Uh, then I will need to test if um, I can uh, go by not using uh, a direct drive extruder. So, uh, quick explanation basically, I would use the MMU2 as the extruder itself, uh, like a bone tube setup, but since it's a bit different, uh, I'm not 100% sure that it will work directly. So, I may need to add an extra motor so that we have enough pressure and uh, to extrude the filament. So that, that's one of the things that may uh, put a bit more work uh, in that project. Uh, and then I will test my design, polish my design so that it works, and then we'll be able to do our first print and test print. Uh, now for the owners of uh, MME2s, uh, you know that getting that thing to work is extremely difficult. So, so like most people aren't able to get decent prints with their MME2. And that's where having my own solution that I developed myself really helps because I will be able to tweak uh, both my code and my design uh, in order to try to fix the problems that I encounter. So um, as a quick example, I can like, like very easily vary, like change the speed. Uh, I can try to find some way to uh, and maybe cut the filament, detect the filament at some place in the design. So I'm able to modify my design. Um, so I feel like most of the work will be getting that physical uh, prototype to work correctly, at least like 99% of the time. Because if, if I don't know, it works 80% of the time, like you change a filament a lot of times in a multiple print. And even if a single one of them fails your entire print is done so i need to to have a really really reliable solution so uh, i feel like that's where most of the work will come in um but the the thing is once that i start doing that work uh i feel like i'm comfortable with releasing all both my code and um uh, my like th modified 3d files uh so i will probably spend a bit of time cleaning them cleaning them up writing a bit of documentation of how to get all that stuff running uh, and at that point, uh, I won't be working alone, at least I hope so, on that thing. And people like you um, or anyone else will be able to help and uh, add their own uh, touch to it. And maybe try to solve the problem at the same time as me. Uh, but for now, I'm still at university, so I don't have a lot of time or a definite amount of time to invest into uh, my videos. So um, it, will be, it'll, it will pretty much go... Um, basically like on, on how I feel about it. Uh, I will post videos when I have time. I will work on it when I have time as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, well, make sure to subscribe and maybe drop a like. Um, and I will see you guys later.